The Simpsons is one of those super hot licenses that really hasn't found its place in the video game world. Out of the dozens of attempts at a Simpsons game, only Konami's original arcade game and the more recent Simpsons Hit and Run are actual quality titles. But EA's latest endeavor featuring Springfield's most dysfunctional family brings something to the table that the previous game somehow missed. Genuine humor. Unfortunately, the writing isn't the only funny thing in the game. Good evening, Springfield. Kent Brockman chasing local imbecile Homer Simpson and his delinquent son Bart, who have picked a fight with an out-of-control donut mascot statue. Bart Simpson, are you and your father insane? Hi, lady, I'm on TV. I just said your name on TV. Don't tell Carl unless he sees this, in which case, hi, Carl, don't tell any I said your name. <laughs> Hello, pathetic store nerd. One copy of Grand Theft Scratchy, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That game is rated M. No problem. I have ID. This is a Cal Calzone Zone frequent Calzone Eater's card. There's a free Calzone in it for you. While each level in The Simpsons game really is its own story, the overarching theme is the release of a hot new video game, Grand Theft Scratchy, that has captured the hearts and minds of Springfield's youth. Bart's longing for the game, coupled with Marge's insistence that he not play such violent filth, leads to the realization that the Simpson clan itself is part of its own game, and the rest just sort of writes itself. Wow, this is the only good book ever written! Maybe you'd do better in a turn-based RPG! The beauty of the Simpsons plot, though, is that the main goal seems to be making fun of video game conventions. The game takes it as far as having Comic Book Guy pop up whenever the characters come across a gaming cliché, such as crates that can be broken for objects, invisible barriers, and the like. But it doesn't end there. Many of the levels are actually based on established game franchises, like the aforementioned Grand Theft Scratchy, or the World War II-themed Medal of Homer. The only play option in The Simpsons is the main quest which consists of just under 20 wildly varied levels. Guide Homer through the land of chocolate, assist Bartman in taking down the bullies, or help Marge gather together an angry mob to destroy all the Grand Theft Scratchy advertising in the city. You mean I can talk to whales like Aquaman? Or do whatever Hawkman does? No, Mom. You have the power to convince crowds to do whatever you want. Just like Oprah! The downside is that once you've played through the entire campaign, there's nothing left to do. Sure, you could go back and try to collect all the various bottle caps and coupons and so forth scattered around each level, plus you do unlock a time attack mode upon completing each area the first time. But really, these are the same tactics that have been used to artificially extend the replay value of games for years, and they've never really worked. Oddly enough, there's no joke about this video game cliché. You maniacs! <laughs> For all the level variety, it's a bit disappointing to find that much of the gameplay in The Simpsons doesn't really change much from level to level. All four characters have their own particular special moves. Homer can turn into a destructive Homer ball, Lisa can call forth the power of her god, Marge can incite angry mobs, and Bart can don his mask and cape to float around. Mostly though, you'll be running around each level punching the living crap out of various other Springfield citizens or items that cross your path. Oh, and every now and again, Marge can dispatch Maggie into really tight areas to solve a puzzle or two. In order to switch things up a bit, almost every level requires a certain amount of teamwork between two pre-selected characters. The game is obviously meant to be a multiplayer experience, and when played as such, is a lot more fun than constantly swapping between the characters. At its heart though, The Simpsons is a pretty average action game, complete with slight collision and camera issues, that's saved somewhat by its license and content. It's amazing what you'll be willing to overlook in the name of a good laugh. For your information, I am the White Chocolate Rabbit. Hey, White Chocolate's not even chocolate. It doesn't even contain cocoa salad. Well, if I'm not real chocolate, then you probably wouldn't be interested in eating me. <laughs> Ooh, White Chocolate. Visually, The Simpsons game has its ups and downs. While the graphics and animation look great, it's obvious these characters were never really meant to jump into the third dimension. So when the camera is placed properly, everything has a cool, almost hand-drawn look about it. But when the camera moves around the denizens of Springfield, they tend to look downright bizarre, and not in a good way. 
to round out the package, we get some animated cinema scenes as well, and everything is voiced by the actual Simpsons cast, so the great lines are delivered exactly as they should be. If you're planning on coming home like that, don't bother. Dad, I'm a superhero now, and I have all these awesome powers! Super powers, huh? Well, that's cool, I guess. I was gonna go shoot bats while reading swimsuit magazines in this cave. Wanna come with? The Simpsons game is a good time in spite of the somewhat mediocre design and technical glitches. Considering that the license is notorious for being slapped onto downright awful games, most fans will probably decide that good enough really is good enough. If nothing else, this playful romp packs in enough in-jokes for both Simpsons fans and gamers in general that it's definitely worth playing through at least once. I hope I win. Last year I was the first guy to barf. Barf? Please, in this business, we refer to that as a Roman incident. <laughs>